Now, if you love Optimal Work Daily, a great podcast to pair it with is The Hustle Daily Show, part of the HubSpot Podcast Network and the audio destination for business builders. The Hustle Daily Show provides your daily dose of business, tech, news, and original stories to keep you in the loop on what's trending in business so you can use this information to help your own company succeed. The Hustle Daily Show's team of writers break down the biggest business headlines in 10 minutes or less, just like we do here, and explain why you should care about them. They'll also do deep dives on topics like a man who won the lottery 14 times and why it's nearly impossible to buy an original Bob Ross painting. I checked out a few episodes of The Hustle Daily Show, and to me, it felt like one of the most fun and streamlined ways possible to get the information you need to stay up to date on current business trends. So be sure to search for The Hustle Daily Show wherever you get your podcasts. Hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. This is Optimal Work Daily, episode 1148. Five ways to turn your unhappy customer into a valuable resource. Part one by Josh Brown with neilpatel.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host here, and uh, welcome back to Optimal Work Daily. Or if you're just discovering us, welcome to you as well. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we do here. I read to you every single day, covering the best work life and productivity blogs anywhere, and we get permission from the authors to read these posts to you in audio form. And every once in a while, we find an article that runs a little bit longer. We like to keep these episodes uh, to about 10 minutes, so I'm going to split this one up into two. I'll read the first half right now, and then the rest for you tomorrow. So that's enough of that. Let's get right to part one and start optimizing your life. Five Ways to Turn Your Unhappy Customer into a Valuable Resource Part 1 by Josh Brown with neilpatel.com There are few things that impact a brand's reputation more than the way it responds to complaints and unhappy customers. Customer service has always been an important part of developing brand loyalty. In fact, it was the center of the business model that allowed companies like Nordstrom's and Zappos to thrive. And now that the internet and social media give individuals their own platform to publish information about their daily lives, it's becoming even more critical for companies to provide great customer service. It's easier than ever for customers to publicly share their experiences, and the way you respond to unhappy customers will determine what they say about you afterward. So what can you do to make sure that you properly respond to an unhappy customer so that you both experience the most pleasant outcome possible? And is there a way you can actually make unhappy customers helpful to your business so that instead of treating them like a problem, you actually see them as an opportunity? Yes, there is. Each dissatisfied contact has the potential for becoming your company's best advertisement, a key referral source, and a stealth undercover operative, if you are willing to listen. Here are five ways to turn unhappy customers into a valuable resource for your business. Number one, make your customer feel heard. All complaints are similarly themed. Something was supposed to happen that didn't. A product doesn't work. A repair person doesn't show up as scheduled. An expectation wasn't met. In any event, your client was inconvenienced or worse. By the time the problem is severe enough for the customer to contact you, they are undoubtedly upset. If you respond to an unhappy customer by immediately trying to get to a solution, it can possibly backfire and make the customer even more upset. Being unhappy or angry with a company or product puts the customer in a highly emotional state. So the first thing you should try to do is get them into a more agreeable frame of mind. Oftentimes, an unhappy customer actually cares more about just feeling like they've been understood. But if you immediately jump to a resolution, the customer won't feel like you've taken the time to truly hear their problem. We all like to feel that we're special, so even if the customer's complaint is a common one, take the time to make them feel heard. You can do this by acknowledging not just the facts of the situation, but also how it made them feel. For example, you can say, It must have been frustrating for you to bring home our product only to realize it wasn't the right model for your needs. 
Whether you are the first line of defense or last in line of escalating concerns, every call or message on social media matters, and the way you handle the conversation from the very beginning can go a long way toward diffusing the situation. While it's only natural to get defensive when someone is criticizing your product or service, you can mine the complaint for valuable information and potentially convert a hostile caller into a loyal devotee. No one is ever going to be more honest with you than an unhappy customer. It also gives you the opportunity to gain valuable insight into whether any internal processes need to be fixed when dealing with customers, so make sure to take detailed notes. Domino's was often the butt of jokes, with many people complaining that their pizza tasted like cardboard. The company tied with Chuck E. Cheese, coming in last place in a consumer's taste preference survey done by Brand Keys in 2009. The company listened to its unhappy customers and responded by changing their pizza recipe. They encouraged consumers, as well as food bloggers, to try their new pizza and to leave feedback through social media. This type of transparency and willingness to take criticism and do something about it generated goodwill toward the company and a willingness for people to give Domino's another shot. As CEO Patrick Doyle stated in a documentary created by Domino's to show how they listen to their critics, quote, you can either use negative comments to get you down, or you can use them to excite you and energize your process of making a better pizza. We did the latter, end quote. Two, do all that you can to delight your unhappy customer. No question, some problems are more difficult than others to fix. A moving company drops a valued antique. A supplier misses a critical deadline. The cable company drops the biggest game of the year. Sometimes you can't undo the problem, but you can always find a way to make it up to the customer. The degree to which you do so will go a long way toward converting your unhappy customer into your most vocal advocate. Going out of your way to accommodate a customer's needs makes them feel important, respected, and in control. Whenever possible, try to give your customer even more than they asked for. By delivering even the smallest amount above their expectations, you can make them feel like they are your most valued customer. When a customer's Christmas package was stolen from their apartment building, the customer service reps at popular online retailer Amazon.com didn't point fingers. They went to work exceeding expectations, delivering a replacement order and waiving the shipping charges. Even though the loss wasn't Amazon's fault, they fixed the customer's problem. The news of their corporate generosity made most major newscasts and generated goodwill and publicity far beyond the costs of the package they replaced. Converting unhappy customers into valued customers will dramatically impact your repeat business. Everyone knows problems happen. Products sometimes break and service providers occasionally fail. It's how you make up for the inconvenience that makes the difference. You distinguish yourself from your competition by the way you make things right. Customers will come back to your brand over and over again when they know you'll address any problem that arises. Three, hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Five Ways to Turn Your Unhappy Customer into a Valuable Resource by Josh Brown with neilpatel.com. If you run a business, you know that having reliable vendors is non-negotiable. Whether you need office snacks, holiday gifts, or wholesale ingredients, you can rely on Nuts.com for delicious products delivered when you need them. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for the highest quality foods for business. They offer delicious office snacks, corporate gifts, and wholesale ingredients. And over 50,000 companies choose Nuts.com for their business needs. From offices to hotels to restaurants and retail stores, And we've even loved their product as remote workers. Nuts.com has sent us plenty of snacks that keep us energized and focused so we can deliver the best work we can. Nuts.com makes ordering for your business quick and easy. Right now, Nuts.com is offering new business customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $125 or more at nuts.com slash OWD. So go check out all of the delicious options at nuts.com slash OWD. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $125 or more. That's nuts.com slash OWD. Labor strikes, climate change, your beat up office printer. What do they all have in common? Come on, it's all about the money. Economics is everywhere and everything, fueling our lives even where we least expect it. If you're a fan of Optimal Work Daily and are curious to learn something new and exciting about economics every week, I recommend you listen to the Planet Money podcast from NPR. 
Planet Money is a different kind of world where the complex economy actually makes sense. Listeners can learn, laugh, and be entertained. And I find it to be really educational too. Money can be confusing and Planet Money is great at providing straightforward explanations for how money is really moving in ways we're usually kept in the dark about. The Planet Money team lives to tell a good story in around 30 minutes. It's econ for the rest of us. So tune into Planet Money every week for entertaining stories and insights about how money shapes our world. Stories that can't be found anywhere else. Listen now to Planet Money from NPR, wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you to Josh, who is a guest writer over at Neil Patel's site. He's part of the marketing team at Soldzi, a social selling platform. And thank you, of course, to Neil Patel for letting us share articles from his site. Neil is well known as an online marketing wizard. Even if you don't have an online business necessarily, you do need a presence online and he can help you get more customers. He's all about generating more traffic and sales and he's got a track record to prove it as he's been named one of the top 10 marketers by Forbes. Entrepreneur Magazine says he created one of the 100 most brilliant companies. He was recognized as a top 100 entrepreneur under the age of 30 by President Obama and a top 100 entrepreneur under the age of 35 by the United Nations. And you can check out everything Neil has to offer, and there is plenty of it, at neilpatel.com. All right, that is it for this episode, which of course I will continue for you tomorrow. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Thursday episode, where your optimal life awaits.